Teaching grammar to ESL students as a new teacher can be intimidating. In this video, I'll share five tips to help new ESL teachers teach grammar with confidence. Tip number one for teaching grammar to ESL students, use your textbook as a guide and not as the only tool in the ESL classroom. Teaching every activity in every lesson of your textbook is not only boring for students, but it doesn't give them the opportunity to learn and practice the language in an authentic way. Think of your textbook as a guide. It lays out the appropriate grammar points and vocabulary for the level that you're teaching, but it's your job as a teacher to make the activities come alive. When lesson planning, choose the activities that are relevant to your specific group of students. For example, if they really tend to struggle with pronunciation, then you might want to focus on those activities. But if they struggle less with reading, then you can probably skip those activities and just do reading every once in a while. I personally never use the grammar explanations in the textbooks and you'll find out what I do instead later on in this video, but I do let my students know that they can always look at the grammar explanations if they have extra questions or if they want to see more examples. Take inspiration from the textbook topics and try and get as creative as possible with them. If you're studying food, for example, you might have your students work towards doing a restaurant style role play. If you're learning about different clothing items, you could have students work in small groups and create a fashion look and then present it to their peers. The point of language learning is to communicate and be able to express yourself, not simply write sentence after sentence in a textbook. Tip number two for teaching grammar to ESL students Use a context to make the language meaningful, and even better if you can include your students' names in some of your examples. Without a context, learning a new tense or grammar structure is meaningless for your students. Let's take a look at an example with used to and be used to. This is a lesson that I did with my adult students in Australia, and it's a context that a lot of them could really understand quite well because they were from countries where you drive on the right, just like me in the US. But in Australia, we were, of course, having to drive on the left. So I started the lesson by showing them these different pictures, asking them to describe what they can see, maybe hypothesize about the different emotions. And then I go on to add a sentence at the top. I used to drive on the right. And as you can see, I have underlined and changed the color of the grammar structure where I want them to focus. Now I drive on the left. And we can talk about the difference. I'm sure a lot of them have seen these signs as they're traveling around Australia. And we can really talk about the differences. Then I use some questions to help guide them. So which side did I use to drive on? Which side do I drive on now? So I'm trying to get them to really understand the difference of the timing between these different structures. After that, I'll then use these questions. What did you used to do in your home country and do you do the same now? Kind of helping them along the way think of things that they used to do in the past. Maybe at this point they're starting to connect that this is a past habit. We can use these questions to talk in small groups or they can talk in partners and then share as the whole class. To introduce the next structure, I'm going to use a different slide and a new sentence. When I first arrived to Australia, I wasn't used to driving on the left. So I have used a different color this time to show that there's a difference in this structure. After five years living in Australia, I'm used to driving on the left. And we can talk about this a little bit. I might ask them some questions like, hmm, are you used to driving on the left or are you used to driving on the right? And depending on how long they've been in Australia, their answers may be different. Now I have some more questions to check their understanding and to try and get them to use this structure. So even if they're not using the structure correctly, they are trying. And of course we will go over all the rules after. At this point, I will show them the structures. So used to and be used to. I can have them talk to a partner, think about what the differences are, when they use each one, how they conjugate them, how they use them in questions, negative forms, just to get an idea of how comfortable they are with them. And then we can talk about the meanings. And of course, at this point, I would go into more grammar explanations, give them some more sample sentences, and go on to different practice activities. Once I've gone through examples with my students, checking for their understanding as I go, I'll set them a task that they can work on by themselves or in pairs before giving them a final task where they have to produce the new language. This method is known as PPP. 
presentation where you're going to present new language to your students, practice where they're going to be given controlled activities that they can kind of test out their new language, and production where your students will produce the new language through activities like speaking or writing. At this point, as your students gain more confidence in their new grammar point or vocabulary, they will be speaking more and the teacher will be speaking less. Before we get to the next point, I just wanted to let you know that if you need any extra help getting started teaching abroad or online, then you can fill up my survey, which is linked down below. Tip number three for teaching grammar to ESL students, use the guided discovery method. Another method for teaching grammar is guided discovery. This is a great way to get your students speaking and participating more and remove the traditional lecture from your classroom. Let's take a look at an example together. For this guided discovery activity, let's suppose that I give each person or each pair a short story. And this is just an example that I made up, but you can use whatever you would like. Then you want to set the task. So I'm going to say, read the story, circle than in red and as in blue. At this point, they're just reading through the story, seeing if they can understand it. And then they're going to be looking for these little signal words. Then I can compare what I have up on the board with what they have. And at this point, I need to set another task. So I'll leave these questions up on the board. So what do you notice about the sentences with than and as? Are they the same? Is there a difference? I can have them work by themselves and then compare their answers in partners or start in partners and then move to smaller groups to kind of get them to slowly form a hypothesis about what's going on. And then I want them to think a little bit more. So what do you think the rules are and are there any exceptions? And at this point, they may be relying on some previous knowledge. Some of them may have seen these structures before and they may just be guessing at this point. This is an example of how they are really in charge of their own learning. Of course, if they're completely off the path and they have no idea what's going on, then as the teacher, you need to step in and support them more. But you will find that your students are quite smart and they can figure out a lot of things just by making connections. Tip number four for teaching grammar to ESL students, use colors, images, graphs, and charts whenever possible. In your classroom, you will meet learners with all different styles of learning. Some will need to hear the new language, some will need to write it down, and still others will need to associate a movement with a new word, for example. This is another reason why just using the textbook and only the textbook can be quite harmful because it's not made for teaching all different kinds of learners. Try to think of ways to present the same grammar point to as many different learners as you can. This might include using different colors or using some clips of sounds or even creating props that your students can manipulate. My favorite resource to use for creating all of my teaching materials for both teaching online and teaching in person is Canva. They've got tons of different graphics. You can create your own charts. They have videos, they have sounds, and you can create worksheets, presentations, pretty much anything you want. It's a teacher's best friend. If you would like to try Canva Pro for free for 30 days, then you can use my link in the description. Tip number five for teaching grammar to ESL students, ask to observe a veteran teacher at your school. One of the best ways to learn how to teach grammar is by observing a veteran teacher. Not only will you gain insight into how they're explaining different grammar points, but also what kind of questions their students are asking and how the teachers are answering those questions, plus what kind of activities they're using to practice and produce new language. Ask your director if it's possible to sit in on another teacher's grammar lesson, and if this isn't possible, maybe because you have the same schedule, you can always invite them out for coffee or lunch and get some of their advice. While asking for this kind of help as a new teacher can be very intimidating, don't let this stop you because it will really help you improve your own teaching and that's the goal, isn't it? To be the best teacher you can for your students. I hope this video gives you some tips for teaching grammar to English language learners as a new teacher. Just remember that everybody starts somewhere and it's important to ask for help when you need it. What else would you like to learn about teaching ESL? Leave a comment down below. You can find me on Instagram at ESLteacher365 and please like, subscribe, and share if you learned something new today. You can watch this video on games to play in the ESL classroom next. Happy teaching!